Hello, welcome to our latest Queen Elizabeth Scholarship presentation from the McMaster Health Forum at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'll provide you with a quick rundown of the McMaster Health Forum, the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program, and the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program here at the Forum. I will then turn it over to our scholar presenter who will talk about their experiences. The McMaster Health Forum aims to be the leading hub for improving health outcomes through collective problem solving. We harness information, convene stakeholders, and prepare action-oriented leaders to act as an agent of change by empowering stakeholders. The Canadian Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Scholarships, or QES for short, is managed through a unique partnership with the Universities Canada, the Rideau Hall Foundation, Community Foundations of Canada, and Canadian Universities. This program is made possible with financial support from the Government of Canada, provincial governments, and the private sector. The purpose of the program is to activate a dynamic community of young global leaders to create lasting impacts both at home and abroad through cross-cultural exchanges encompassing international education, discovery and inquiry, and professional experiences. The Master Health Forum had a previous Queen Elizabeth Scholarship program. We are very proud to have been selected as one of 20 Canadian institutions to host a second round of scholars. The new program ran from 2018 to the end of 2021, but was extended to the end of 2023. The focus of the McMaster Health Forum's current Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program is strengthening health and social systems. Our scholars have contributed to strengthening health and social systems and have become part of our large and growing network of health and social system leaders. During our original Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program, we hosted 14 incoming scholars and we sent three outgoing scholars to work with our partners. We also had an additional 44 outgoing interns who traveled abroad to work with partners of the Master Health Forum. For our current Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program on Strengthening Health and Social Systems, we have hosted seven incoming scholars and we have sent abroad 24 outgoing interns who have worked with our partners around the world. Our scholar presenter today is Annika, who at the time of her QES experience was an undergraduate student in the Bachelor of Health Sciences Honors Program at McMaster University. Annika has developed an interest in public health, evidence-informed decision-making, and improving health systems. During her internship, Annika hoped to gain further insight into the process of integrating evidence into decision-making to enhance health systems. Annika, over to you. And I will be talking about my Queen Elizabeth Scholarship experience in Sydney, Australia this past summer. So just to start, a little bit about me. I'm currently a first year medical student at the University of Toronto, and I just completed my Bachelor of Health Sciences at McMaster University this year. I have a strong interest in public health and health policy, and I previously worked as a research assistant at the forum. So this is just a brief agenda of what I'll be covering today. First, where I did my internship in Sydney and what projects I worked on, then some reflections on what I learned over the three months that I was there, and I'll, then I'll end off with some pictures of what I did in Sydney in my free time and some tips for future scholars that hope to visit there. So my internship was at the Sachs Institute, which is based in Sydney, Australia, but they really collaborate with people all over Australia. It's a nonprofit organization and their mission is to improve health and well-being by driving the use of research in policies, programs, and services. So the Sachs Institute has quite a few different teams and each of us were working within a uh, different one, I was a part of the Evidence Connect team, which is a program that facilitates the delivery of evidence reviews to translate evidence into policy. And on the screen is just a picture of me with a few of the other QES scholars that were there at the Sachs Institute at the same time that I was. So now for a little bit of an overview of what I worked on while I was there. In my first week there in May, I was introduced to a couple of the projects that I was going to be working on. And one of them was a realist review, which I had never done before. So to effectively contribute as part of the team, I spent a few days getting oriented to the team's processes and the current projects they were working on, as well as reading about realist review methodology. Then I jumped right into the first project, which was the realist review on skin cancer prevention interventions in schools, which took up the majority of my time in May and part of June. After that, I got started with a rapid review on models of collaborative care, which I worked on um, until August, until I left, essentially. In July, I assisted with a stakeholder engagement workshop, and at the beginning of August, I co-led a workshop 
for the SACS team on a systematic review software called Covidence. So to start off with the sun safety realist review, Australia has one of the highest rates of skin cancer in the world, and it's about two to three times the rate here in Canada. However, over the last 30 years, Canada's rate has also been steadily increasing. Anyways, this results in a big emphasis on sun safety and sun protection education in Australia. So the Sachs Institute was conducting a realist review to identify effective sun safety interventions that have been applied in primary and secondary school settings in similar jurisdictions to the state of New South Wales. The aim of this project was to ultimately have an impact on the redesign of a statewide sun safety health promotion program. The realist review method was chosen because it focuses on the practical application of the review, and so we looked at academic papers as well as grey literature and policy documents. This review was done as a collaboration between the Evidence Connect and the Evaluate teams, so I was working with the Evaluate team scholar Margaret. My role in this project was to help with creating the eligibility criteria, completing title abstract and full text screening, helping with data extractions, creating tables, and drafting the report, as well as quality assessments. The next review I worked on was on collaborative care. So similar to Canada, access to primary care services in rural and regional and remote areas is limited, which especially impacts the health care that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities receive, as they are more likely to reside in these areas. So this review looked at collaborative care models in rural and regional locations in Australia, but also similar jurisdictions such as Canada. And collaborative care here is referring to a community-based approach, and it is often tailored to the need of that specific population. The aim was to identify mechanisms that enable successful collaborative care to extrapolate these to improve current healthcare access in rural areas. This review was also a collaboration between the Evidence Connect and Evaluate teams, and similar to the last review, I was helping with the eligibility criteria, screening, data extraction, quality assessments, and drafting the report. The third project I worked on was a stakeholder workshop, and so prior to my arrival, the Evidence Connect team had been working on a longer-term project to create a client experiences survey for a government department in New South Wales. It was an iterative project in collaboration between the department the Sachs Institute and also a contracted research team. Part of the project was for the Sachs Institute to facilitate a workshop to get feedback from the department members that were going to be using the survey after the first round of research with the aim to narrow down a focus for the next stage. So I was lucky enough to participate in the meetings for the planning of this project. I helped out with note taking and also supported the facilitation of the breakout rooms on the day of the workshop. Lastly, uh, I presented on the systematic review software called Covidence. So when Margaret and I were first assigned to the Sun Safety Realist Review, we both identified Covidence as a useful tool for conducting the review as it allowed us to collaborate in real time. The rest of the team at the Sachs Institute didn't have experience using this software, but we helped implement it for both the Sun Safety and Collaborative Care Reviews that we worked on. Because of the success of the projects using this software, we were asked to lead a lunch and learn for the organization to discuss our experiences using Covidence, a brief tutorial of how to conduct a review using the tool, our special tips and tricks for what we've learned over the years of using it, and also why it would be beneficial for the organization to look into implementing it as a standard part of their workflow long-term, as it streamlined our process and eased collaboration between the two teams. So this presentation was recorded for future internal training purposes at the Sachs Institute, which I think is pretty cool. And it's good to know that we left an impact and contributed to strengthening the team's capacity for quick turnaround times with their reviews. This internship was a great learning opportunity. The work was highly collaborative in nature, so I got to learn from everyone on the Evidence Connect team and even people on the Evaluate team as we participated in joint projects. There are three main things that I learned. The first was I got insight into the evidence to policy process. So it was my first time working on a realist review and a rapid review, which are much more um, practical and application based, as well as fast paced than regular systematic reviews. And being a part of all of the team's meetings gave me a look into how the small team operates to provide many evidence reviews with varying levels of turnaround time to organizations and agencies that need it. 
I also learned that maximizing the impact of the research was key at the Sachs Institute, so the work wouldn't end at just producing the report. There's a strong effort to make sure that it can be properly implemented by and interpreted by policymakers who may not have a research background. So after completing evidence reviews, um, there are meetings with the department or agency that commissioned it to help explain how the research can best be used to support policies and programs. The second thing um, that it taught me was the, was the in-depth knowledge about the Australian healthcare system. Uh, it's quite similar to Canada's healthcare system and they both face similar challenges. For example, both Australia and Canada have First Nation populations that uh, have poor access to healthcare compared to the rest of the population. And in fact, when I was reading case studies and articles for the collaborative care and sun safety projects, many of them actually came out of towns of Canada, uh, which was cool. I was able to compare and contrast the two healthcare systems and observed what works well, what can be improved, and things that uh, would be useful to bring back to Canada. Lastly, I built on my research skills. And so I worked on developing skills for the practical side of the realist reviews. And that involved a lot of analyzing the context in which the interventions and models were tested to determine the relevance and applicability to Australia's policies and programs. And that I think is a really useful skill that I hope to use in the future. I also built on my organizational skills because I was coordinating large amounts of information. Through the stakeholder workshop, I learned new ways that stakeholder perspectives can be integrated into the research process. So not only to guide the topic of the research, but also the methodology and the way that the final product is structured and delivered. Finally, I became familiar with two new types of reviews. So realist reviews and rapid reviews, which will be an asset as I hope to continue working in the research field in the future. So now I'm gonna discuss um, some of my explorations of Sydney that I did in my free time and on my weekends while I was there. Um, so most people know it by the iconic Opera House. And here are just a couple of the many photos I took of the Opera House and the harbour front. For anyone unfamiliar with the city, it's the second largest city in Australia, as it was recently overtaken by Melbourne, and it is the capital of New South Wales. It's on the east coast of the country and is home to over a hundred beaches. So I spent quite a lot of time exploring these on my weekends. Um, so since it's on the coast, I think Sydney is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever visited. I found myself doing their coastal walks almost every single weekend and tried to catch as many sunrises and sunsets as I could. So on this slide, uh, the left side picture is of Bondi Beach, the pool that they have there. In the middle is Manly Beach that I came across on our walk from Spit to Manly. And on the right side is Palm Beach, and that photo is at the end of a hike up to the lighthouse that we visited. Just some other coastal walks and beaches that I visited, as there were quite a few. Uh, the two pictures on the left are from the Coogee Beach to Bondi coastal walk, and then the pictures on the right are from the Rose Bay to Watson's Bay coastal walk. I also um, explored Sydney's architecture, learned about its history and their art scene. So these are just some of the things that I saw. On the left is Viv the Vivid Lights Festival, which happens every winter there. Uh, on, in the middle is the U Sydney campus, which I think is gorgeous. I also visited the Australian Museum and learned a lot about Australia's history and their, um, their animals and the creatures that all reside in the ocean, which is a little bit scary. Uh, and lastly, the Art Gallery of New South Wales was absolutely stunning, and I learned a lot about the current and past Australian artists that are very famous. I was also lucky that my supervisor and team were quite flexible with a hybrid working arrangement, so I was able to make a quick trip down to Melbourne in June while still working on my projects. So here's just a few of the things I saw. The picture on the left is just the CBD or their downtown. The middle is Flinders Street Station and on the right is Hosier Lane, which is known for its street art. Lastly, um, we were lucky enough to visit the Blue Mountains. So one of the other scholar supervisors, uh, Carmen from the Aboriginal Health Team was so kind and offered to drive us to the Blue Mountains for a weekend. The mountain range is about an hour and a half drive from Sydney and it has some of the most beautiful hikes. 
So on this slide, we have the Three Sisters Lookout, uh, and we learned about the Aboriginal legend behind the rock's creation. We also did the Grand Canyon hike, which was challenging, but quite beautiful. And on our last day there, we visited the Janolan Caves and got to walk through one of them. So that's the picture on the right side. Now I just have some practical tips for future scholars that will be going abroad to Sydney. Um, in Australia, they walk on the other side of the street, so be careful of that if you don't want to run into people. Um, when looking for housing, the rental prices are listed per week, uh, so they can they can look cheap at first, and then and then you realize you have to multiply it by four. Um, in terms of of public transportation, the Opal card was great. Um, it was quite convenient for getting around Sydney because they have a bus, a train, a light rail, and also ferries. And you can use that Opal card on ferries, which I would highly recommend, especially on the weekends. The fare is capped daily, and so you can take the ferry as many times as you want. And the views are great. Um, if you're going in the summer, so Australia's winter, I would definitely check out the Culture Up Late program which has been running for a few years. So in Australia and Sydney, things do tend to close quite early. For example, stores will often close at five or six, all the cafes will close around two or three. However, they have this initiative to keep museums and art galleries open until 9 p.m. on specific days of the week. So I found that this was a great way to fit things in on weekdays and really check out every art gallery and museum that I could find. I think my last piece of advice would be to explore other parts of Australia as well if you're in Sydney. Australia is quite a big country and the cities are very different and flights to major cities are frequent and relatively cheap. However, there's also heaps to explore within Sydney. I, I had a giant list of everything I wanted to see and do but didn't even get through it in three months. So there is there's lots to do even if you don't explore other cities. In conclusion, I'd like to thank some important people for making this incredible opportunity possible. First, thank you to Sachs Institute Supervisor Eileen Goldberg for her mentorship and the rest of the Evidence Connect team for welcoming me into your meetings and projects. I'd also like to thank James McKinley at the Forum for all the guidance you provided throughout this process, as well as the Forum and McMaster University for selecting me to go abroad. Lastly, thank you to the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program for funding this opportunity.